also I want to talk about, like I say, outcome-based education. And that's a misnomer too, because outcome-based education isn't education at all. Outcome-based education is, is pure conditioning, psychological conditioning. Now there are three types of psychological conditioning that are being used. Before I go into those, I probably should, there are probably people that are saying, what's the difference? What's, what's the difference between learning and conditioning? Well, I know a little bit about this. Before I got into education, about 25, 30 years ago, I spent four years as a psychology major in college. And we were, at the time, the school I was going to, uh, Colorado State, was really into experimental psychology and uh, learning theory and all of that and conditioning and so I had for about a year I had my own very very own rats about three of them and I had a Skinner box and Skinner boxes of course are, are named for B.F. Skinner who thought up opera and conditioning and every every night I'd go off to the to the old learning lab to the old rat room that we used to call it and I'd get my rats out and I'd take them into the Skinner box in, in the laboratory and I would condition my rats now, now, my rats, they were very, very, very smart rats. I had, uh, they were all naive about Skinner boxes before I put them in. And so when I first put my rat in, well, they'd go sniff at every corner because they're inquisitive animals. And then what they would do is, is they would glance toward a little bar on the end of the Skinner box. And as soon as they would glance toward the bar, I would drop a food pellet. And pretty soon, over time and conditioning, uh, I got the, the rat to actually, I'd put him in the Skinner box and he'd make, I'd put him in the center, he'd make three circles around the, around the Skinner box, and then he'd go sniff at each corner, and then he'd go up and press the bar three or four times, and then he'd get his pellet, and then he'd go back and do it all over again. Totally fascinating. Only one problem. Rats and children are different. But what they're doing is conditioning children, not, not uh, teaching them. And the basic difference between learning and conditioning is that as a learner, I am free. I have freedom. I am free to accept or reject what I am taught or what I read. All of us out here, if we read a magazine and read an article, we're free to accept it or reject it as individuals. Conditioning, you are no longer free. Under conditioning, I am no longer free not to be conditioned. Given the proper stimulus, I will respond the way my conditioner wants me to respond over time. And that's what they're doing with our children. As I say, three types of conditioning. One is the, what they call classical conditioning, which is Pavlovian. The reason they call, call it Pavlovian is the fellow by, a Russian fellow by the name of Pavlov was the one who designed it. And it's an association. Most of you have heard of Pavlov or Pavlov's dogs where he rang the bell and when the food came in and, and eventually the dogs would salivate not just to the, to the food coming in, but they would, you could leave the food out in the other room and they'd salivate, salivate to the bell. So it's, it's conditioning by association. And we are going to associate two things together and, and get the child to respond the same way to the second one that he does to the first. And a good example in the schools is the term family. Family, that term in and of itself, generally carries with it a lot of warm, fuzzy, good feelings. It also carries for a child the, the, the realization that, that there are authority figures, there are rules and regulations, so forth. Now children are going to school, and the term family is being associated with not your family at home, but the school, or the classroom, or the teacher. And as that association is done over and over and over again, eventually, through time, the child associates all those warm, fuzzy feelings about the nuclear family at home to his new family at school. Okay? So that's a conditioning by association. The second one which has to do with my Skinner box example, is, is what they call operant conditioning or instrumental conditioning. Operant conditioning, as I explained, it's, it's like a Skinner box. Well, the, the way my rat learned, quote, unquote, because I don't think it was learning, but the psychologist would say it's learning, 
The way it was done is what, through what they call successive approximation. And you notice I said I put my, my rat in the box and he didn't know anything and, and so he was just checking it out and as soon as he looked toward the bar that I wanted him to ultimately press, I rewarded him. Next time, after I got him looking toward the bar, then, then what I would do, I would wait until he turned and, uh, toward the bar and then I would reward him. And then I'd wait to reward him until he took a step toward the bar and then two steps and three steps and you could lead him right through and they call it successive approximation because what he's doing is success on each successive trial he's approximating the behavior you want him ultimately to, to do that's outcome based education in, in, in its pure form remediation over and over and over again each time the child more, uh, more approximates uh, more closely the behavior that ultimately you want that child to exhibit. And that's why it's called behavior modification, very slowly over time. You give teachers 12 years in a classroom setting doing this kind of conditioning every day, day in, day out, you can get virtually any behavior you want. The other kind of, of uh, conditioning, which is a, a specialized classical or specialized operant conditioning, is known as observational learning. And that's a, a fancy 25 cent word for modeling. Yeah, that's really all it is. It's, it's modeling behavior. But it's also where we get in schools today the cooperative learning, the, the working in groups, that sort of thing. We're, because we're, we're going to model each other's behavior uh, we're going to model the teacher's behavior. And that's the other type of conditioning that's being used. It is not learning. The children have no choice. They have no freedom in the learning situation. That all comes under what is called, as you talk to these administrators and teachers, the process. Now you'll notice when you talk to them about outcome-based education, they keep saying it's a process. And the process is the most important thing. Well, as I say, I, I object to the process altogether. But even if we go so far as to say the process is okay, the reason they want to keep your minds on the process is because in doing so, you forget the real nuts and bolts of schooling. And that's the curriculum.